Welcome to the biology section of our practice MCAT questions. In this video, we're going to be going through questions 26 to 30. So first, I'll show you guys the questions so you can pause the video and attempt them on your own. Here's 26, 27, 28, 29, and 30. Now let's go through the questions together. So in question 26, it says that Drosophila protein is studied in the laboratory and it is discovered that the tertiary structure of this peptide has a large number of tight turns such that the individual peptides change direction frequently. Which amino acid would be expected to have a high frequency within this protein? So we're just looking at some protein, doesn't really matter where it's coming from, and we're told that the tertiary structure has a large number of tight turns. So if there are a lot of turns in the tertiary structure, that means that we are talking about turns ha happening between beta sheets. And so those are called beta turns. And the amino acids that are normally found there are ones which can accommodate the tight angles that have to be present in, in this form of tertiary structure or the beta turns. So for this, we need amino acids that can accommodate these specific angles and option A proline is the correct answer because it is very good for these immediate turns that we have to have because of the structure of proline so for proline you should know that there's a ring that's formed as a part of its side chain and that limits the angles that it can really exist under and that causes problems when it's trying to be a part of other alpha helices and beta sheets so it fits best in beta turns so proline is something that we would expect to find at a high frequency if this protein has a lot of beta turns. Glycine also, like it, glycine could be expected to be found if proline wasn't an answer that was given and glycine would be the next best answer because its side, ch its side chain group is just a, just a hydrogen, which means that it can also accommodate these tight angles that it has to be in in beta turns, but all of the other amino acids, so lysine, valine, it's difficult for them to undergo these tight angles. So therefore, proline is the best answer. In question 27, it says the gene for color blindness is X-linked recessive. One of the necessary conditions for a female to be colorblind is what? So we have a gene which is X-linked recessive, and then what is necessary? And we're talking about a female to be colorblind. So just looking at our Punnett square, if we had a female and a male come together to pass on their genes, half of their offspring will be female, so double X chromosome, and then half will be male, so X and Y. And then we know that this gene is X-linked recessive, so that means to be colorblind, if you're a female, you need to have two copies of it and we're talking about the conditions for a female to be colorblind so if you're a female you need to have two copies of the gene the recessive gene so if your father had it you would not if only your father carried the gene you would not be colorblind as a female unless your mother also had at least one allele for it as well so if the mother was just a carrier then this female over here so half of the females would be colorblind because they would have picked up both of this x-linked recessive gene and so you just need at least one from the mother the mother can be a carrier but she doesn't have to have both alleles she doesn't have to be colorblind but the father also must be a carrier and since the father has just one x chromosome if this if this certain condition is x-linked recessive then just by having one copy of it, the father is colorblind. So a necessary condition for this, for this, for colorblindness to be picked up by female is that option B, a father must be colorblind. So her father must have this X-linked recessive allele. And then just because the father only has one X chromosome, that allele is expressed. And so there is no other allele like for, for females where you have the other X chromosome, which would give you the dominant phenotype. But in this case, because there's only one 
X chromosome in males, the father is going to be colorblind. So A is incorrect. You don't need a mother who's colorblind. She can just be a carrier, and that's fine. C is saying you need a father and a mother who are colorblind. No, you need both of them to at least carry one of the alleles, but the mother does not have to be colorblind. And then D is saying neither parent will be colorblind, but both carry the defective gene. No, that's incorrect, because if both carry them, then the male, the father, will be colorblind. So B is the correct answer. In question 28, we're asked which of the following is true regarding eggs in the female reproductive system. So what is true regarding eggs? Option A is saying production of eggs begins at puberty. That's incorrect. It does not begin at puberty. It actually begins before the, before the, the female is even born. So her egg production begins then. But like actually maturing the eggs takes place after puberty. But production of the eggs happens a long time before that. So that's incorrect. B is saying the mature ovum is formed while inside the ovary. That's incorrect. It does not happen inside the ovary. It happens after fertilization, which of course happens after the ovum is released from the ovary, so that's incorrect. C is saying the zona pellucida is the primary regulating structure for entry by sperm cells, and that is correct. So the zona pellucida surrounds the egg, and when sperm, when, when they finally make their way towards the egg and reach the zona pellucida, then the acrosome reaction begins to happen, and then the acrosome of the sperm releases digestive enzymes to break through the zona pellucida and reach the egg. And so, yeah, it is a primary regulating structure, which guards for entrance by sperm cells and make sure that just one sperm cell reaches the egg. So that's correct. D is saying polar bodies are approximately equal in size to oocytes. That's incorrect. They're not equal in size. They're much smaller than the actual oocyte because the oocyte takes cytoplasm and nutrients from the polar, polar bodies and they're much smaller in comparison. In question 29, it says ovulation is immediately preceded by which of the following? So ovulation preceded by meaning what happens before it. A is saying a surge involving a rapid and dramatic increase in LH, luteinizing hormone. That is correct. You should know that there's a rapid surge in LH. And right after that, we know characteristically that that is implying that ovulation is going to take place. So that's correct. So the release of the egg happens after this surge in LH. B is saying a lowering of estrogen levels. No, that's not correct. C is saying the produ production of progesterone. That actually happens after ovulation, so it's not something preceding ovulation. D is saying release of the egg from the ovary into the fallopian tube. That's actually the definition of ovulation, and so like ovulation cannot be preceded by ovulation itself. So that answer doesn't even make sense. So A is correct. You should know that there's this characteristic surge in luteinizing hormone, not of estrogen or any other hormone, but specifically luteinizing hormone. And then we get ovulation occurring. In question 30, it says all are components of eukaryotic cell membranes, except for what? So we're talking about eukaryotic cell membranes and which one is not a part of them. Glycolipids, yes, they are part of eukaryotic cell membranes. So that's when you have a sugar attached to some lipid. Cholesterol also is part of the plasma membrane. Helps regulate fluidity. Phospholipids, phosphates attached to lipids. Yes, of course, these are part of eukaryotic cell membranes. But option D, peptidoglycan, this is a part of the kingdom bacteria and not eukaryotes. And so that is something that is not part of eukaryotic cell membrane, so it's the correct answer for question 30. That's it for the questions in this video. If you enjoyed what you saw, make sure to check out our course on teachable.com. The link is in the description below, and the course we go through a lot more questions and break down why, why the correct answer is correct and the others are incorrect. And other than that, if you want to keep seeing the videos that we post over here, make sure to subscribe to this channel. That's it for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one.